Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're working on a vocal chain for use with our XLR input on our Pod HD 500X. Before we get started, I'd like to invite you to subscribe. And if you're interested in more of these videos, don't forget to ring the bell. The first thing we need to do is make our connections. I'm gonna plug a microphone cable into the microphone jack. Since I tend to record vocals in stereo, I'm gonna use both the left and right outputs. So today I'm using short unbalanced cables. While I'm back here, I'm also gonna turn up the mic level. Don't forget to plug in your mic. Plug in the main power and we'll boot up the unit. By the way, today's narration is made using the path that we're about to create today. So this signal path is, I think, a pretty classic vocal chain. And we'll get right into it. So this is the chain that I have on my unit. I call it Classic Vox. I'm gonna select New Patch. And the first thing I'm gonna do is engage the mic. So I need to go to the inputs and change input number one source to mic. I'm gonna save that. And while I do, I'm gonna give it a new name. In this case, Classic Vox 2. So the first thing I need to do is add a preamp. And the best preamp for the XLR is the Vintage Pre. And I'm gonna do the rest of the narration in real time as I add the effects. So you'll hear a change in audio real quick. Okay, now we have our preamp set up and audio coming through, but it's not quite loud enough. And we have a lot of other effects we wanna add on. So I'm gonna turn up the gain. I'm also gonna turn the master up on the unit. So now I'm getting Quite a bit more gain. So this is, we're already at a usable level. On my meters, I'm at about 60% for my recorder. So now I have a preamp. I can adjust the gain here, the output, the phase, and the high pass filter and the low pass filter. So I'm going to start with the gain. I'm gonna put that up to about 70%. You can hear it coming up. We'll go 75. Okay. The output. We're in a pretty solid range. Let's get some other effects on, see where we're at. My meters on my recorder are now at about 80%, coming up on pretty much as high as we wanna go. So I'm gonna turn my master down because I don't know exactly what's gonna happen with this compressor I'm about to put in. So on the next switch, I'm gonna put the model of the LA-2A compressor. And that'll be under dynamics. And tube compressor is right there. So you can hear that it, it bumps up the volume pretty well. And it's already in a compressing state. My voice gets squashed a little bit. I'm gonna turn the threshold up because I don't want so much squeeze and the threshold is pretty much how hard you're hitting the compressor. So if your compressor is set to a very low level, it's gonna compress everything in the room. You're gonna get all that background noise. Your vocals are gonna be squeezed quite a bit. So I like to sort of just take the tops off the vocals to start. So we're gonna to go to about 70%. It's a pretty natural sound. Now, if that gets too quiet, which I don't think it is, but we can always turn the level up. There's plenty of level on here. Let's just go to 30. There's still a ton left on the master here. So if I turn the master up and we're at 30, it's pretty loud. So I'm gonna back the master off to about three quarter. And I'm gonna turn this back down to about 20. Okay, on with the effects. In the next switch, we're gonna add the Studio EQ. That's based on the API 550 EQ. Okay. I might consider turning down below 75 on my voice. Maybe one or two 
db. But it sounds to me like my voice is coming through pretty clearly in my headphones, so I'm not going to add any top end. But this is where you would do it. So, the next effect. I think a nice tape delay works well for a lot of songs. Go to delay. 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 I like the tape echo, tape echo, tape echo, but I want about 150, maybe 200 milliseconds. You can always tap tempo it. Turn the feedback down a little. Start around 20, 25. We just want a little to follow the voice and then that will be picked up by the rest of the reverb. So now we've got it on. I'm gonna turn it off for a moment while we set up this other reverb. So I like a plate. It's a classic reverb. We can change the decay, the pre-delay, the tone, and the mix. And you probably have to deal with each one of these. So for decay, oh, we don't need it too long, but I'm gonna say 40. Pre-delay, I'm gonna turn that off because we essentially have a pre-delay with our tape delay. Tone, yeah, we don't want the, the plate to be too bright. I'm gonna turn it down a little. and mix. Anywhere between 10 and 20% usually is a good start. You'll always tailor this for each song. Now, just for clarity's sake, I'm gonna move this reverb. So we have one solid signal chain. So again, from the start, that was the vintage pre, gain around 75%, output around 60%, High pass filter on 20, kil 20 hertz, no low pass filter. Dynamics, that's the tube compressor, similar to the LA-2A. Threshold on the higher side, level around 20%. Again, in the context of your song or your narration, you'll figure out what you like most, what's working better. Here's the studio EQ. The delay, we're using the tape echo but really any delay you like. I set around a 200 millisecond delay time. And with the feedback, you get a folding delay effect. I didn't mess with the bass or the treble on this. The mix I set at about 30%, which sounds, which sounds like, like this. this. And for the reverb, I like a plate. Plate sounds like this. Everything, Everything together, together sounds, sounds like, like this. Settings on that plate reverb are about 40% decay, no pre-delay, tone around 40%, mix around 20%. Again, suit these to your material. And that's it. Give it a save. And now you have a really solid signal chain for a microphone set up with your pod HD500X. Enjoy. Enjoy.